Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to actually discuss a very interesting historical fact about how we actually discovered that the speed of light is not infinite. In other words, today we're going to be talking about the first time someone was able to measure the speed of light. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So for this particular simulation, we're going to be using two tools, and one of them is going to be this amazing free tool known as Stellarium. Uh, the tool that I'm using right now basically demonstrates what the night sky looks like from certain locations. And here we're actually going to go to the time and the place when this particular person discovered the speed of light. Now, first of all, when exactly was this? So the date is pretty long time ago, specifically 1676. And the location was Denmark. So we're going to go ahead and change our location uh, from Korea, where I am right now, to Denmark, the country in North Europe. So I'm going to just choose a random city here. And basically, here we are. This is essentially not exactly what it might look like, but this is what it looks like in this simulation. Now, the year is 1676, the location is somewhere in Denmark, and the scientist by the name of Ole Romer is realizing something very unusual. Now, let's actually wait for the night time to come. We're going to advance time until it gets darker, and we're going to start looking toward our friend Jupiter right there. And so for many, many years, Jupiter was actually used as a kind of a time tool or time measurement tool by different sailors at sea. And what they would actually do is they would look at Jupiter and we're going to fix our location on Jupiter right now and then zoom in just to see what it all looks like. And so here what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at Io, how it basically occasionally hides behind Jupiter, right? Like right now, for example. And so um, the sailors at sea were using this as a measurement tool for their clocks and the, they were able to kind of um, readjust the clocks on the ships using the occultations of Io because um, if your vision was good enough, you could actually see uh, this blink occurring. Now, uh, this occurs about 1.769 days, uh, every 1.769 uh, days, basically almost 1.8 days. And uh, for, for years and for decades, sailors were using this occultation of Io in front of Jupiter uh, to measure uh, and to readjust their clocks. Now, interestingly, what Ole Romer realized is that it seems like this occultation, for which we actually had very specific data, um, happened differently depending on the time of the year. As a matter of fact, it was a little bit off by about 10 minutes um, in, in December and then in January, and whenever you would look at it, if it was a different month, the occultation didn't actually occur specifically on schedule. It was always either late or too early. And so he started thinking, well, maybe just maybe it's actually because the speed of light is not infinite like we thought at this point. And the only person to think that before him and trying, uh, who, the person who tried to measure it was actually Galileo himself, the person who saw Jupiter and Galilean moons for the first time. And back in the 1600s, 1638 specifically, he actually tried to measure the speed of light using a relatively simple tool. He basically asked his assistants to stand on the uh, on the hill about a few kilometers away and then he basically used a torch or some sort of a light source to ask his assistant to shine back at him when he saw his own torch. And uh, he tried to measure the speed of light that way but obviously because the speed of light was way faster he would need to measure things in microseconds. So he kind of failed at it and um, wrote that, well it seems like uh, speed of light is actually extraordinarily rapid. He couldn't measure it. But let's actually go to Universe Starbucks Square and try to estimate or visualize how Ole Romer, the Danish astronomer, was able to actually predict the speed of light relatively accurately. As a matter of fact, he was able to actually get to the value of about 214,000 kilometers per second which is, um, you know, it's it's pretty accurate. It's, yeah, okay, so it's the actual speed of light is about 299,000, but he had a value within about uh, 20, within about 30% of the actual value, which is not too bad. 
Anyway, so here we go. We're going to go um, into the uh, solar system simulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically position ourselves sort of in this way. Zoom out a little bit. And I think I'm actually uh, I'm going to place yet an, um, another planet Earth on the opposite side of um, of this Earth. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this, you'll see in a second. So let's place one more Earth right there on the opposite side. This is going to represent uh, Earth at different time of the year. And so what we're going to imagine now is that we have two sailors, one right here on Earth in February and one right here on Earth in what's plus six, October, I guess, uh, looking at Jupiter. And they're both trying to correct their clocks by looking at the occultation of Io in front of Jupiter. So let's actually go ahead and place Io here as well. And, and so here's a little Io orbiting around Jupiter. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be imagining, so they're looking at this situation from Earth, and this is what they're seeing. They're seeing light traveling from Jupiter toward Earth. Now, how are we going to visualize this? Well, there's this excellent tool right here that creates a pulse, and it's a pulse that's going to be traveling at the speed of light, and we're going to basically just kind of position it so that it crosses Earth. And, well, watch what happens if I slow this down to about... Let's just slow this down to about, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds per second. So about, actually 13. 13 times faster than actual, the actual speed of light. And so we're going to launch, launch this. This is the occultation. And you can kind of see the ring right there starts increasing in size. Might as well just launch a few more. And let's maybe accelerate time just a little bit so you can see what's happening here. So this, this is the event of occultation that um, is created by the light that reflects from Io. And obviously this comes from the sun, reflects from Io, and now is headed back to Earth. Now we have two Earths, and what we're looking at is, we're looking at the time here. So as soon as this first ring reaches Earth, we're going to look at the time, and then we're going to, need to take a look at the second Earth afterwards. So just watch this. So this is um, obviously the time it takes for the light to travel from Jupiter, which is obviously a few minutes. And right around now, as soon as it reaches Earth, we're going to do, take a look at what time it is on the clock. And three, and two, and one. So this is the first Earth. And right now, the first sailor sees the occultation and takes measurements of his time. And 351, all right? But because um, we had these occultations measured in advance, this is essentially how the sailors um, used uh, these occultations to predict time. We're now going to be seeing the same occultation, but at a different time, because the light from that particular event had to travel longer. And right around here, so we're gonna wait a little bit more, right around here, the same event is going to occur at a different time. And specifically here, it's at 4.07, almost 4.08. So there's a quite a dramatic 15 minute difference here. Possibly even more than 15 minutes because this wasn't very accurate. And so this way he realized, and specifically Oli Romer realized that, well, first of all, this is not an accurate way of measuring your clock if you're on a ship. But second of all, most importantly, is that we know that there is a certain distance that Earth travels around the Sun, and he was able to um, estimate this distance because we knew by then that planets orbit around the Sun. And then he used this distance, which is basically two astronomical units, to predict how fast the light travels. He was able to estimate the time of travel, and using the distance, discovered that, according to him, the speed was about 214,000 kilometers per second. Very, very impressive. And this is back in 1676. And so this was the first ever official measurement of the speed of light. But obviously since then we got better. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video. And hopefully you learned something from it. And hopefully you'll come back tomorrow to learn something else. And subscribe if you still haven't. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.